Hello and welcome back to PDM Vlogs. Today we are looking at this 25mm f1.7 C-mount lens from Pexco. Now I think it is a, well an unbranded lens, but the box, box said Pexco so I'll call it Pexco. This is a CCTV lens um, which I have adapted to Micro Four Thirds. So this one cost about 25 quid um, and including postage which was nice. Um, and if any of you have watched the channel already, you'll know I love C-mount lenses, so I've got my favourite Fujian 35mm f1.7 lens. This lens is awesome. Now, I wouldn't use it for landscape stuff, because you get notable vignetting around the edge. Not unusable, notable. But it's got this really nice, soft, sort of shallow depth of field bokeh thing going on. Um, it's a bit unusual. It's not very kind of linear. It's sort of got kind of a vintage look, almost like an anamorphic look, which I really like. Um, I also invested in the 25mm f1.4 version, which frankly has just been really disappointing. For one thing, it's got the aperture ring in front of the focus ring, I, I don't know why, and it just says near and far, which is kind of a bit dumb. At f1.4, it's almost unusable, like, it, you get literally just a tiny little focus area at the front. Even that is a bit soft. I mean, the edges are just completely blurred. Um, it's It goes beyond being kind of like a charming effect and it's just kind of unusable. I could maybe use it for like a dream sequence, but frankly, I haven't used this for anything bar test footage so far. In kind of stark contrast, this one uh, was also 25 millimeter, but this is much more usable. It's, you know, sharper, much more across the board than uh, the f1.4. It does seem like the ones with a slightly higher aperture, um, you know, that's not f1.4, like f1.7 or 1.8, they do seem to be sharper and better built as well. I mean, if you look at the, the neither of these lenses is big, but look at the size difference. That does, I think that does tell you something about sort of the quality of the lens. So this one is sort of more of a pancake lens, but it's got quite a wide diameter, um, comparatively speaking. Um, all metal construction, you've got the focus ring at the front, which why wouldn't you on that one? So that's nice. Uh, the actual kind of focused throw, if you like, is only about a quarter. So uh, it's not so great if you want to do like long focus pulls. But actually, if you want quick and fairly accurate focus pulls, you've got focus picking on the GH5, which does work really well with this one. Um, so you can use it quite easy. If you're doing sort of stuff when you're following a subject or people are coming into shots, it's quite easy to sort of focus back and forth. Now, before I go any further, I do need to uh, warn you guys that this is actually permanently attached to the adapter. I did actually buy a, a rear uh, cap for it as well. Um, basically what happened is it did come with this C-mount adapter, or well, C-mount mount, <laughs> mounting ring um, but when I attached it it only focused to about four or five feet in front of me now this is actually a known issue with this design of lens I mean there are other brand names but it's the same lens um, and there was a fix that I found for it but it didn't work and then what I did is I just took the the c-mount bit off and just sort of held it in place with the adapter and that seemed to work fine. It was actually focusing full to distance. I can focus, there's houses out there that I was able to focus to and it was focusing further than that. So I then decided to just glue it in place with not too much super glue, but a lot of it. So much so that it kind of got over my hands and fortunately it hasn't done any damage to the lens, which is great. So, you know, all the rings work. So Dan, if you're watching this, this is actually a birthday present for Dan. By the time this goes up, he will have received it. Uh, but this is not for me. That kind of leads me on to the next thing. So I didn't buy this for myself. Um, I bought it for Dan because he has just got a GH5 as well. So we now have two in phase of media, hopefully three soon because we're going to get Adam on as well. But that's another time. Uh, he's got the 12 to 60 lens, which is great, but I thought that he needed a nice fast prime. And unfortunately, you know, my go-to 25 mil is the Panasonic F1.7 25 mil. I know it's not the best quality build, but uh, it's been really impressive for most of the things I've used it for. You know, F1.7, it is really, really good. So yes, given the fact that this one is about 150 brand new and this one's 25, obviously I was going to go for this one because I can't really afford to go buy another one. Um, sorry Dan, I, you know, at some point I'm sure we'll get, get another one, but we just wanted to get you something. Um, and I saw the reviews on this were actually pretty good. And for one thing, it comes with a proper, you know, clicky little lens cap like that. It's got a 37 millimeter filter thread so I can attach a step up ring, which can then be used to attach uh, an ND filter or a polarizer or something, which is really cool. And just overall, it's, it's, impressive build quality and then when it actually comes you know comparing these two I did a few shots comparing these two in low light obviously this one does a little better but actually it was pretty comparable um what's interesting is 
25 mil on this one, I think is a bit tighter than this one. Um, I don't know why that would be. I would have thought 25 mil is 25 mil, but I guess that's partly to do with adapting and, you know, obviously again, this is mass, this is really mass produced. And I don't imagine the quality control is quite as good as on Panasonic, but it's still pretty much a 50 mil equivalent. Um, and it was, yeah, it was really easy to use. And obviously the GH5 has got like insanely good stabilization. So any lens you put on it, if you set the focal length correctly, it's going to look good. Where it kind of falls apart, and this is, you know, to be expected, is you do get some blurring around the edges. Um, it's almost kind of like having a migraine. Um, that makes it sound worse than it is. It's just, I, I, you won't notice it unless you suddenly look for it. Like, you know, generally speaking, the human eye goes kind of to the center or sort of, you know, you don't really notice your peripherals. But actually, if you look around the screen, you'll notice sort of, especially the bottom right. Now, I think this might be to do with the fact that this is just mounted directly onto this and not with the c-mount screw so it might be slightly misaligned it's not a deal breaker because actually up close you don't see it at all it's only at distance but actually the good point about this is that at distance it's still really nice and sharp which i can't even say for this one i can't even say for a lot of my vintage lenses so that's quite an impressive feat um Again, I wouldn't use this for landscape filming. This is the sort of thing I would use for if, if I'm filming a subject, if I'm doing some studio filming, wedding filming would be a great one. I mean, you can see in some of these shots that actually, you know, when you when you sort of start bringing people into the foreground and it really, you know, the, the background blur is really nice on this actually. So yeah, I've been really impressed so far and I'm gonna switch over now to this lens on my camera so you'll see what it looks like in kind of a studio setting. So uh, this is the 25 mil on my camera. Aha, and here we go. Right, so this is the 25mm on my GH5. As you can see, it's a lot tighter. This is why I didn't film the whole thing like I did with my last uh, lens review. So um, I'm just I'm trying to make sure here that I'm actually in... Okay, there we go. I think that's... I think we're about there. So yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm at this kind of awkward distance where I can't quite reach it and I want to make... I've got the, the app down there. I'm trying to make sure everything is kind of in focus. So if it goes in and out, I am sorry. I am trying my best to keep it in because it is at 1.8, so it's fairly wide and you don't have a lot of uh, depth of field to play with. So yes, quite tight, so it's 50mm equivalent, actually probably near to like 52, 53, something like that. Um, but it looks good, it's nice and sharp, you know, you've got nice, nice sort of smooth blur in the background. With any of these cheaper lenses, you do find that the one thing that you lose aside from, you know, maybe quality, is uh, shadows. So you do have to put more of the shadows in, well, contrast really, actually. So you do have to put a little bit more of that in, but actually on this one, it's not too bad. This is a really good lens. I'm really, I'm genuinely really impressed. And actually it's one that I'm tempted to buy for myself, actually as well, considering it's so cheap. So I'm gonna show you now uh, what happened when we actually gave this lens down. I haven't done it yet, so this is in a few days time. Um, and so you can see uh, his reaction and what he thinks of it and sort of get his first thoughts and uh, impressions of it. Uh -huh, there we go. Yeah, it's actually I've actually already mounted it on, um, <laughs> but I may have had to do a little bit of Frankensteining to make it work. Well, that's nice, though. I like that. Is it? It's a twenty-five mil f one point eight. What do you reckon, Muffin? No, not interested. Right. All right. So when you switch it on, it's going to ask you for um, freak out. Like, what? No, no, it'll be fine. It just has to. Uh, current focal setting thirty-five millimeters. Change the settings. Change settings. Yeah, and then just in input twenty-five, and then set, and then that'll set up your. Stabilization. Oh, I see. Twenty-five. That's like a little. It's an aperture, and yeah, it's a proper like little oh, cine lens. This is why, why I quite enjoy that. Oh my god, this. Deep, deep, deep. There we go. I love that the peaking still work. I like that depth of field. That's nice. Oh my god, that is that's a sensitive focus though. Like that's. That's a real shallow gun, damn. Auto or manual? Well, manual. <laughs> can't afford, can't afford none of that auto. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you did enjoy, please subscribe and check out all our sort of social media and website and stuff. If you are actually looking for videographers, uh, we are available for hire in the UK and outside the UK. So get in contact. Links are all in the description, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.